Let's take a look and see how we could visualize other multiplications, okay? So let's say 4 times x plus 2, 4 rows of x plus 2. So here's x and here's 2, 4 rows of that. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4 x's and 4 times 2. So 4 x's plus 8. Again, look carefully. Let's visualize multiplication. 4 times x plus 2, 4 rows of x plus 2's which is the same as I can just lay all the x's down first, which is 4 times x, and then lay all the 2's down, which is 4 times 2, or 8. Multiplication distributes over addition. That's what we see right here. All right, let's do that. Here's x times x. So here's x times x, and here's the 2, so 2x. Can you see? So this is x, this is x plus 2. So x times x plus 2 can be visualized like that. It's the same as saying x times x, which is x squared, okay, plus what? Plus these things, so which is 1x, 2x, so 2 times x. So 2x and x squared, that's the total here, x squared plus 2x. Multiplication, distributing over addition. Can we do that same uh, process here? So we have 23 times 35, which is the same as 23 times 30 plus 5. I can write 35 as 30 plus 5. Multiplication distributes over addition. So let's do that. OK. Now once you have that, we still have to do 23 times 30, so 20 plus 3 times 30. So again, we're using distributive property to multiply. So 30 times 20, 30 times 3, 5 times 20, and 5 times 3. And now let's write it all out. So 600, 3 times 30, 90, 20 times 5 is 100. And 3 times 5 is 15 for a total of 805. Let's do a visualization of that same thing. So we have 20 times 30 here. That's the 600. We have 3 times 30, which is the 90. That gave us the 23 times 30. Now we have, so that's 23 times 30, this first part. Let's look at 23 times 5 now. So 20 times 5, which is this part here, and then 3 times 5, which is the 15 over here. So again, distributive property allows us to visualize it, or you can do it algebraically in this manner. Most of you are probably used to seeing multiplication in this manner. I want you to be able to do all three ways because it will give you a really good sense of what multiplication is. So how do we do that? So write down the numbers. Don't worry about decimal points. We'll worry about decimal points a little bit later. So 5 times 3, which is 15. But as we saw before, 5 times 3, 15. So this is in the 10th spot. So we can do a carryover. 5 times 2, which will give me 10 plus 1 is 11. Right? 10 plus 1 is 11. So that will give me the 115, which is this part right here. Can you see? 5 times 20 and 5 times 3, which is the 115. OK. Then we do what? We put a little 0 here for placeholder, because you're really multiplying 30 times 3. That's why we put a 0 there. And 3 times 3 is 9. So it's technically 90. So that's this 90 that you see here. And then 3 times 2, which will give me 6. So that will give me 600, really which is this 600 plus 90 right here, 690. And add those two together, which we know how to do. OK. So you can write this. Now, if there were decimal numbers, you do the same thing. But then you count the decimals. So if there was a decimal point here, that would be one decimal point. If there was a decimal point here, that would be two. And then you would just move your decimal point one, two. We'll work on that a little bit later. 
All right, try that on your own. So 2x plus 3 times 3x plus 5. So we have 2x plus 3 times 3x plus 5 multiply. I know in America people say FOIL for this kind of problems. I don't like the word FOIL because somehow it makes it look like it's a different process when you have more than two terms. So I prefer to just say multiplication distributes over addition. It does not matter whether you have two terms, three terms, four terms here or here. You are using multiplication distributes over addition. Keep that in mind and just multiply it out. Term by term multiplication and 2x times 3x, 2 times 3 is the 6 and x times x is the x squared and you keep going down the line. So add like terms together and then write the final answer. Let's visualize that. So we have 3x plus 5 and 2x plus 3. Just like when we were looking at 23 times 35, look what we have here. This here refers to 2x times 3x. This is the 3 times 3x. This is 2x times 5. This is 3 times 5. You can see how whether you have decimal numbers or polynomials, the multiplication is working out the same way. All right, let's see if you can do the following questions on your own. Pause the video here and let's see what you can do. So consider this picture below. You are being asked to determine what possible multiplication problems can be represented by this picture. Remember, unless you label it, you're not going to be able to do it. So use the previous examples and see what you can do. Assuming you have come back, let's say we wanted to represent these lengths as following. So from here to here is 10, from here to here is 10, this is 1, so we have 2 up and down for the purple, and horizontally that's 5. So each little square is a 1 by 1. Each green one is 10 by 10. Each red rectangle is 1 by 10. So if you do that, we will have 100 plus 100, 200. We have each one of these are 10, so 50 plus 50. This will be 20. This will be 10. So let's see what we can write here then. So if the green squares are labeled as 10 by 10 square units and the smaller squares are 1 by 1 square units, then the picture has the following area. That picture will have 330 square units or can represent the multiplication 22 times 15 because this is 22 and this is 10, 15. All right, let's see what happens if you label them differently. Instead of 10 by 10, I'm saying that the green boxes are x by x because we don't know. Let's say this is still 2 by 5. So then we will have 2x's, 2x squares because x square, x square, 5x's and 5x's. So then our shaded area will represent 2x which is 1, 2, 2x plus 2 times x plus 5. So there can be many different answers possible here depending on what you choose these labels to be. So if somebody chooses to represent this x by y or a or this instead of 1 and 2 instead of 2 represents it as something different, you will have different answers. So there can be many different answers to this. The ones I've shown you here are only a couple possible possibilities. We did extension of addition with decimal numbers. So now let's look at extension of decimal number multiplication. So we already saw that if you wanted to multiply, say, 62 times 74, you go 60 times uh, 70, 60 times 4, which will give you 4200 plus 240. You can also then continue on with 2 times 70 and 2 times 4. 
So that will give you 140 plus 8, and then you add all of those together. So that's how you do decimal number multiplication. And what we just actually did was distributive property of multiplication over addition. Let's see how that applies to polynomial multiplication. So let's take a look at uh, 6x plus 2 times 7x plus 4. So again, instead of 60, we have 6x. So 6x times 7x and 6x times 4. So that will give you 42x squared because 6 times 7 is 42. x times x will give you x squared. 6x times 4 will give you 24x. Let's do the same with 2. 2 times 7x and 2 times 4. So 2 times 7x will give you 14x, and 2 times 4 will give you 8. And now you have to add like terms to simplify your answer. So you will have 42x squared plus 38x plus 8. And you can see how we got that answer using distributive property of multiplication over addition. Look at the parallels between this problem and this problem. Except here, all these terms could be added together, but x squared and x cannot be added together, so polynomial stays as is, just like in addition, we had to do that. All right, let's continue and see if now you can do some practice problems. So go ahead and get ready. Not just do the problem, but also look at similarities and dissimilarities between the problems that we're giving you here. So let's take a look at these four problems. Pause the video here finish doing the answers, and then come back and play the rest of the video so you can see whether you are actually learning uh, the material or not. All right, let's see. We have 2 times 74, 140. 2 times 70 is 140. 2 times 4 is 8, so that will be 148. 2 times 7x will give you... 14x and 2 times 4 is 8. And here you cannot add like terms, so that will be it. Because there are no like terms, right? 2 times 300, 2 times 40, 2 times 8. That's what you're going to have to do. So 2 times 300 is 600, 2 times 40 80, 2 times 8 16. And then add them up together. Here, same thing. 2 times 3x squared will give you 6x squared times 4x will give you 8x, and times 8 will give you 16. And again, you cannot add any terms here because you do not have any like terms. Look at the parallel. Four, here we have 148, whereas here we had 14x plus 8. Here we had 696. Here we have 6x squared plus 8x plus 16. Pause the video, see what you can do on your own. And then at the end of these problems, write down the conclusions from A through F, what you saw as similarities and dissimilarities. So go ahead, pause the video, let's see what you can do. All right, assuming you have come back to check, we have here 34 times 57. So we're going to have 30 times 50 and 30 times 7, 4 times 50 and 4 times 7. All right, so that's going to give you 30 times 50 is 1,500. 30 times 7 is 210. 4 times 50 would be 200. 4 times 7 is 28. And then add like terms. And let's see what we got. You will follow the exact same process, distribution property of multiplication over addition. So you are distributing sometimes. When people multiply binomials in America, you like calling it FOIL. And I actually do not prefer calling it FOIL because that kind of restricts your ability to think. Always just think about how if you are multiplying two quantities, you can use distributive property of multiplication over addition. And why is that? Because you have an addition right here, 3x plus 4 and then times. 5x plus 7. So 3x times 5x, 3x times 7, 4 times 5x, and 4 times 7. And then that distributive property of multiplication or addition will work no matter how many terms you got in the first quantity and no matter how many terms you have in that second parenthesis. 
All right, and then add like terms, of course. 21x and 20x will give you 41x. So again, here we had 1,500. Here we have 15x squared. 410, 41x. 28, 28. So similarity is that polynomial and decimal number multiplication both use distributive property of multiplication over addition. And the only dissimilarity is that here in decimal numbers, we have carryovers and place values you have to worry about. Whereas here, you just have to make sure that you uh, multiply the quantities of variables with exponents properly. All right, so now let's move on and let's see if you can do this problem. So go ahead, read the question, see what you can do. Pause the video and try the problem on your own and then we'll discuss it together. Assuming you have come back, let's see what answers you got. So first of all, let's read the question. Question says, perform the following operations and simplify your answer. You have a polynomial 2t cubed plus 5t plus 7 plus 6t to the fifth plus 3t to the third plus 7t plus 4. Let's see what answer you got. Is there anyone here who is watching or who is in class who got the following answer? If you're wondering, wait, I got that answer, I would highly recommend, please figure out why you may have gotten this answer. This answer comes only if you took the first polynomial and you multiplied with the second polynomial. So it would be incorrect because you are asked to do addition here. You have first polynomial plus second polynomial. The reason you may have multiplied is because all the previous problems were asking you to multiply. And suddenly we're throwing a different kind of problem at you. And we are expecting that you are reading the problem correctly. Because this is what can happen on an exam, right? You have multiple different problem solving skills needed all at once. So it's very important that if you made a mistake like that, first of all, if you realize you make a mistake, there are many who immediately go to saying negative things to themselves, like I'm stupid, I'm no good, I am not good at mathematics, I can do this. However, that's an exaggeration of what just happened. You probably just misread the problem and know that human beings are really good with using habit energy. You are doing multiplication, 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 and suddenly you are in the multiplication mode, and so that's why you probably just multiplied. It is okay to make mistakes. Get that in your head. It is okay to make mistakes. Making mistakes is what allows you to learn. So please try to develop kindness, compassion, and non-judgment towards yourself. If you can cultivate kindness, compassion, and non-judgment towards yourself, it will take you a long ways to success. So it's immediately we run to blaming somebody or calling ourselves bad names because in the moment you feel good about saying these negative things when you make mistakes. However, know that the more negative things you say to your brain, your brain actually literally shrinks. So it's important to say positive, turn mistakes into something positive. A positive learning experience would be to figure out why you made that mistake and then move from there. We already saw that it was because we read that as multiplication problem. So in order to do this problem correctly, I would highly recommend to be in a habit. Well, if you're alone, you can of course read out loud like I am doing. 2t cubed plus 5t plus 7 plus 6t to the fifth plus 3t cubed plus 7t plus 4. Because then your brain can actually process what operation you just spoke. So being in the moment, not be distracted, it will allow you to process what the question is asking. Because once you know what the question is asking, your brain automatically knows what to do. So go ahead, pause the video now, especially if you had the wrong answer. 
and then see if you can do it with knowing that it is an addition problem. So go ahead, pause the video. So let's see what answer you got. So we will have 6 t to the fifth from this second polynomial, which is t to the fifth is the highest power that appears in both polynomials. So there is no other t to the fifth, so it will remain 6 t to the fifth. 2 t to the third and 3 t to the third. t to the third is the like unit, so 2 and 3 will give you 5 of those. 5 t plus 7 t will give you 12 t's and 7 plus 4 will give you 11. So the final answer is right there. Please make sure term by term addition that you still remember how to do that. All right, let's move on to the second problem. So let's see if you can do this problem. Pause the video and let's see what we can do. Some of you might react to this problem and say, uh oh, this is way too complicated. I don't think I can do that. So don't go into that space. If you truly feel you cannot do this, just remember what we've been working on. One thing at a time, stay focused, stay positive, and just focus on one thing at a time. Be mindful, close your eyes, sit back in your chair, take three deep breaths. The three deep breath practice is extremely important to reduce stress in any situation, not just while doing math problems. Mindfulness means bring your full attention, be present in this moment. Don't be distracted by phones or music or people talking. Be focused just on this problem. Stay on task. So what does one thing at a time mean? We've done this in our previous uh, complicated problems. So you, that means you're going to cover up things that make it hard. So let's cover up the last two terms of this first polynomial and now the problem is a little bit simpler. Remember this is what a mathematician does. See a complicated problem, you break it into smaller components that you are able to do and then you move from there. So pause the video and let's just see if you can do this first part here which would be 2t to the third times 6t to the fifth plus 3t cubed plus 7t plus 4. Go ahead. So if you finished, this is what it would look like. So 2t to the third and 6t to the fifth will give you 12t to the eighth because 2 times 6 is 12. t to the third and t to the fifth is t to the eighth. Um, 2 times 3 is 6. t to the third and t to the third will give you t to the sixth. 2 times 7 14. t to the third times t will give you t to the fourth. 2 times 4 is 8, and t to the third will be t to the third. So once we do that part, we can uncover the next component, right? So that will be plus 5t. So go ahead, pause the video, see what you can do. Color coding it also allows you to keep track of what you just got done. So use colored pencils. All right, so 5 times 6, 30, 30, t to the 6, because t and t to the 5th will give you t to the 6. 5t times 3t to the 3rd will give you 15t to the 4th. 5 times 7, 35t times dt squared. So 35t squared, 5 times 4, 20, 20t. Let's add more terms, so that's the plus 7. So now multiply the 7 and the rest of the terms. What property are we using? Refresh that in your head. We are using what? We are distributing this 7 across addition. So we are still using distributive property of multiplication over addition. It does not matter how many terms are there in the first polynomial. You can have two terms, three terms, four terms. does not matter. You just go one term at a time and multiply it out. So See if you got the answer by multiplying by 7. 7 times 6, 42, t to the 5th. 3 times 7, 21, t to the 3rd. 7 times 7, 49t. 7 times 4 is 28. So now we have finished multiplying, but remember it said simplify our answer. So simplifying the answer means add like terms. So go ahead, pause the video, go ahead, like add like terms. Let's see what you got. Assuming you have come back, 
Let's start with the highest exponent, so t to the 8 for the first. So 12t to the 8 will be 12t to the 8. t to the 6, we have 6t to the 6, and 30t to the 6 will give you 36t to the 6. 42t to the 5th, because there's only one t to the 5th term. 14t to the 4th and 15t to the 4th will give you 29t to the 4th. And let's see, t cubed, we have 8t cubed and 21t cubed will give you 29t to the 3rd. And let's see, we have t squared, 35t squared, there's only one t squared term, so we'll stay. t is we have 20t and 49t are giving you 69t, and then we have a plus 28. Right? So that would be our final answer then. So a few important things to take with you is read problems carefully out loud if necessary to process directions, cultivate patience, stick with it, and most of all, don't give up.